There was no problem when we came. The Turkish archives are open, like ours. Among those who used the Ottoman archives, there is the Armenian historian Mr. Ara Serafian from Britain. German researcher Mr. Hilmar Kaiser was accompanying him. They have taken thousands of documents as microfilms and photocopies. Among the diaspora Armenians, there are people who act as a torchbearer for Armenian allegations. For example, Mr. Ara Sarafian is a leading name in Britain. There is Mr. Hilmar Kaiser in Germany. These people explicitly gave the name of the research subject as the Armenian Genocide Studies. We have presented them the documents they wanted to see without any limitations. It is interesting, during his research that lasted for a few years, Mr. Serafian took photocopies of 3,000 documents from us. Mr. Hilmar Kaiser took photocopies of 5,900 documents. Facts reveal that Ottoman archives are open to everyone, from the Armenian Mr. Ara Serafian to BBC Television, to German Mr. Hilmar Kaiser, to the historian Alexander Safarian, anyone who wished has had access to the Turkish archives and taken copies of documents. On the other hand, it is impossible to have access to the documents related to Armenians in the archives of Armenia and other countries. I could not enter the archives in Armenia. I wrote a letter, but they have not even replied. I have never been able to gain access. I would be very happy if it were possible. Armenians based their genocide allegations on the cable messages that were ascribed to the Minister of the Interior of the period, Talat Pasha. Aram Andonian claims to have found a document in Aleppo, and by means of this fraudulent document, he alleges that Talat Pasha ordered the extermination of the Armenians. Turkish scientists have proved that the said cable message, which is being exhibited in the Genocide Museum in Yerevan, is a fraud. Halef Valisi. Mustafa Abdul Halik Bey was assigned as the governor of Aleppo but had not gone there. It appeared as if he had signed a document ordering massacres when he was not even there. He could not have been there because he was still in Istanbul on that date. However, there was another governor in Aleppo. There exist, in the Ottoman archives, authenticated letters signed by the other governor in the said period. Fraudulence of this kind is common. Besides the documents, codes were also fraudulent. They would never send something handwritten from the capital city Istanbul to Aleppo. They would send a code. For example, 125, 364 next to it, and then 441, etc. Aram Andonian and his friends knew that the Ottoman Empire used codes for correspondence during wartime. However, they did not know what the codes really were. They made up the codes. We have the code books of the time. Two-digit figures like 22, 41 that they made up were never used. So, the fraud starts with the codes. The Prime Minister of the Ottoman Empire, Talat Pasha, was murdered in Berlin by an Armenian named Tehlerian on the grounds of the fraudulent cable messages ascribed to him. General Bronsard Schellendorf, one of the national heroes of Germany, is among the people who happen to know Talat Pasha closely. In his article published in the Deutsche Allgemeine Zeitung Daily on July 24, 1921, Schellendorf stressed that the accusations toward Talat Pasha were unfounded. The British, the French, Italians or Russians who occupied the Ottoman Empire could not find any documents in the state archives in Istanbul ordering Armenian massacres. 144 people were held by the invaders with the accusation of perpetrating Armenian massacres, but the court of the occupiers could not even produce a proper indictment and had to release them. The Istanbul High Commissariat documents and reports to Lord Curzon, now available in the British public records, 
also reveal clearly that Turks had not resorted to any massacres against Armenians. Moreover, the Ottoman capital was under the invasion of the British and they searched the archives thoroughly for three years. There is an official letter of the British authorities to the US. They said, we could not find any documents in our archives that we can use to blame them, that is, that would constitute a legal proof. If you have any such document in your archives, send them urgently. There was no such document in the American archives either. There is a legend, namely the Mount Musa legend, that Armenians wish the world to believe. This legend became the subject of Franz Verfeld's novel, Forty Days at Mount Musa. Mount Musa is in Antakya. Armenians there revolted against Ottomans during World War I. An uprising was instigated near Mount Musa, and the Armenians withdrew to this mountain. They were equipped in the best way, and they had the best guns. They were positioned there as the forward attack troops of the Allied powers, almost certainly with the desire of turning Silesia and southeastern Anatolia into an Armenian province. The author of the novel 40 Days at Mount Musa, author and poet Franz Werfel, was a Jew. During the time he wrote the book, Europe was under the suppression of Nazis. Er hat in seinem Roman die Jungtürken he used the word young Turk in his novel instead of Nazi. Whenever the young Turks appear, these were certainly Enver and Talat, they were symbols. They substituted Himmler, Kaltenbrunner and names like that. And he used Armenians as a crutch, substituting for Jews. He identified them with the fate of his own people, he rightfully feared for. As a poet, he was outstanding from his point of view. On the other hand, it was a great injustice to the Turkish nation. Extrem unfair gegenüber dem türkischen Volk. There is a painting of skulls among the fraudulent materials some Armenians use for their genocide propaganda. The original of this painting is exhibited at Tridiogov Castle Museum in Moscow. Artist Vasily Berasagin was inspired from the 1871 Russo-German War tragedy and he named the picture The Evil of War. One of the fraudulent materials used as proof was an oil painting of the famous Russian artist Verisagin that was painted between 1871 and 72. This painting was presented as a photo taken in 1915. Some Armenian propagandists did not hesitate even to present a painting of a famous artist as a photograph proving the so-called genocide and thus deceive the uninformed public. They conducted a slander campaign against Kemal Ataturk, the founder of the Turkish Republic, as well. An article was published on August 1, 1926, in the Los Angeles Examiner Daily. The author of the article was claiming to disclose some statements of Kemal Ataturk as if he were accepting the Armenian claims. It is alleged that a Mr. Emil Hildebrandt from Switzerland, who claimed to be a journalist and artist, had an interview with Kemal Atatürk. That is right after an assassination attempt in Izmir against Atatürk. Let us assume it is true. It is a Hearst Group journal, Los Angeles Examiner. 
The article is published in that newspaper and Ataturk's signature is...